Autism affects over half a million people in the UK alone, and it makes it difficult for someone to understand emotions and to develop social skills. Well, I'm here at the University of Hertfordshire to meet Casper, a friendly robot who's having a remarkable effect on children suffering from autism. Casper was built in uh, 2005 by a small design team and an engineering student. It was uh, meant to be used only in a very small scale uh, uh, study for a few weeks. Once we had the robot, we took it out to schools uh, where we work with children with autism. Hello, I am Casper. Let's play together. Well, hello, Casper. It's good to meet you. Though I have to say, Ben, he doesn't look as friendly as I was expecting. Why does he look like this? He looks strange to you and me, but it's purposefully like this because it's, we simplified all the features because the aim is for children with autism and for them they feel comfortable where there's less features on the face and minimal expression. Try to discover. This is the very basic game that's a cause and effect. So if you touch somewhere, okay. you might see... This is nice. It tickles me. Oh, that's uh, lovely. What about stomach, tummy? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, laugh, <laughs> laughing in the stomach. Uh, <laughs> See what's happened if you pinch his nose, for example. Ouch. This hurts. You see, in this way, we, we try to give feedback encouraging a certain behaviour and discouraging in, improper behaviour. We found that the children respond to the robot in a in a very surprising way. I mean, I was personally, and as a scientist, I'm not often surprised. They were first of all instantaneously interested. So all of them went, went for the robot, wanted to touch the robot, explore the robot. So far we have very encouraging results that are showing that we can, for example, uh, use Casper in situations where maybe pairs of children who would normally never play with each other suddenly play with each other via Casper, with Casper as a social mediator. Well, I've met up with two children who've been working with Casper and their families. So here's Ronnie and Eden. Hello. Have you seen any change in Ronnie's behaviour? It's, it's made a big difference. He now knows the difference between happy and sad. Um, ah. He's uh, so like if he's crying, he will sit there and say, Ronnie's sad. Or if we're doing something together and it makes us laugh, he will actually say, Ronnie happy. Or he'll say, Mummy happy. To know how they're feeling yeah. as well, it's so important to us because it's a form of communication. Happy! He's happy! At school, she's actually got proper friendships now. You know, children used to approach her and she'd be a bit like that. And it may be coincidence, but around the same time as working with Casper, she'd start to embrace this a little bit more and she was happy to hold hands and, and then hug. Affection used to always be on her terms and if you didn't, say, can I have a hug, and you just went and hugged her, then you might mm -hmm. get scratched or something like that. So you always had to pre-warn her where now, it, as you see, it's, it's much more spon spontaneous. Unfortunately, there are only three Caspers in existence at the moment. But the University of Hertfordshire is looking to raise funds to make 30 more and to do more in-depth research, working with many more children all across the UK. I'm passionate about the Casper project. As well as being a science and technology broadcaster, I'm a former electronics student at this university and I did my teacher training here. But my reasons to support this project go way beyond the personal. Casper was recently highlighted in a list of research going on in UK universities that can have a major impact on people's lives. So please join me and support the campaign to continue this research into the impact of Casper for children living with autism.